simplifying algebraic fractions. And the key thing about simplifying algebraic fractions is uh, we're dividing. I mean, it's kind of obvious because it's a fraction. That's what the line of a fraction is. It's a divide sign. So if we're dividing something on the top by something on the bottom, they're numbers, then we can literally just cancel it down like we would, you know, a normal fraction. If you had uh, 15 over 10, hopefully you'd see that you can divide both those by 5, and you'd get 15 divided by 5, and 10 divided by 5, you'd simplify the fraction. We can still do that, um, but we also have to worry about the algebra. Now, the key thing about the algebra, we can just cross out lots of things here, and we're going to use the fact that anything divided by itself equals, oh, that's a funny A, isn't it? Got a bit of a tail on that one, never mind. A divided by A, it's not supposed to be a Q, A divided by A is 1. So if that's the case, then we can just cancel those out. We don't need to have, if we had 3A over 2A, we could just cross out those A's because they equal 1 and they're not changing what the fraction is. It's the same fraction without both of the A's as it is with both of the A's. Just like we cancelled by 5, if that was 3 times 5 to give the 15 we had before, and 2 times 5, we crossed out the 5. Oh, actually crossed it out this time. Crossed out both 5s because they cancel each other out in that they divide and make 1, and 1 times doesn't do anything. So this first one, oops, this first one is uh, we can just cancel the numbers. 4 divided by 2 just gives us 2 on top. We don't need to put 2 over 1. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but it'd be a bit crazy. And then with the a's, we've got a squared here. That's two a's, and we've only got one a on the bottom. So we cancel that one a with one of those a's. So if you just cross out the squared, oh, cross out the squared, and you're left with the a. So I'll write it over here as my answer, 2a. And then for the b's, we've got b and b cubed. That's three lots of b. Yeah, b times b times b. So cancelling this one b, cross that guy out, is going to cancel just one of them. So that cubed is going to become squared. So writing my answer, b, um, no, not on the top. It's on the bottom. Uh, 2a over b squared. And that's my answer. Okay, easy peasy. Now the difficulty with the next ones, I completely understand why then it gets a bit complicated because you've got minuses and you've got pluses and there's a bit of confusion as to what you're allowed to cancel and what you're not um and the key thing is if you that you can think about it two ways um you can either think about it as um you can only cancel something if it's in everything so not that it is here but if there was an x here some people would be like, oh, look, x and x, I can cancel those. No, you can't. Because of this minus sign, these are two terms, if you like, on the top. The 2x term and the 12 term. And to cancel something, it would need to be in all of the terms in the fraction. So in each term on the top and in each term on the bottom, obviously there's only one, but there could be two if it was 10x minus 3. You can't cancel those x's because... They're not in all four terms. That can go a bit wonky. So a much better way of doing it is to do it by factorizing. And if you just ignore cancelling for a moment, and fully factorize as much as you can, top and the bottom, and then see if there's something you can cancel uh, in, the, in the times and divide bit. So obviously the top here, we can factorize that. We can bring the two out. We can say this is two x minus 6. We've just said, what can we divide out of 2x? We can also divide out of 12, and it's 2. 2x divided by 2 is x, and 12 divided by 2 is 6, and it's still a minus sign. I know that doesn't look like a minus sign. It's gone all curly, but never mind. Um, and that's still divided by 10. Yeah, I've not done anything to the denominator. Now we can start cancelling, but only the things that times and divide. So you've got to treat that whole bracket as a thing unto itself, okay? You can't cancel something in and out of the bracket. So uh, the only thing we can do here is the two divided by 10 becomes one over five. So our answer is x minus six over five. We don't need the bracket anymore because, because um, 
we're not timesing by it. It's just it's just x minus six, and that's you know timesing by one. We don't need to write that. It's exactly the same thing for this cat. We're going to factorize first, fully factorize, take out the biggest amount of number, which is a four, and take out the biggest amount of x, which is an x. Now be careful. The thing we've taken, we've taken the whole of that term out, 4x, so it doesn't disappear. Okay, you get 1, 4x divided by 4x. Remember, factorizing is a, is a dividing situation. Uh, so 4x divided by 4x is 1, left in the bracket, a plus sign, and then 16x squared. You've got 16 divided by the 4 gives us 4. You've got x squared divided by the x leaves us with x, and then we would still divide it by 24x. Again, we can't do anything with uh, the brackets here. There's no big bracket underneath, and you can't go in and out of the bracket. So we're just looking at this 4 and 24, which is going to give us 24 divided by 4, uh, 6. And the x's we can cancel. So cancel those x's. They just disappear. We don't need the bracket anymore because I've cancelled that 4 and cancelled that down to a 6. So I can just put my 1 plus 4x nicely on the top. There are situations where the brackets might cancel. So um, let me just get rid of this one and just get to another example. Uh, you might have something like, let's steal what they had here, 2x minus 12 was the numerator but then this time let's have a numerator of let's have a think 3x minus 18. not very exciting but here we are if we factorize that we're going to get two bracket x minus 6 and underneath we're going to get three bracket x minus 6. And in this case, the whole bracket can cancel. That whole bracket is just 2 times something in a bracket and 3 times something in a bracket. And because those something in the brackets are the same, that whole bracket will cancel with that whole bracket. They just, both of them just disappear and the answer is going to be 2. Oh, no, that's not a 2. There we go. So 2 over 3 is our answer. It's just what we're left with, those coefficients 2 over 3. That's as far as this set of questions goes, but if you're going to go up to the sort of GCSE standard, you can get questions which are quadratics. So if you are looking at this and thinking, ah, but my question is far more complicated, let's say you've got something like this bottom one, but it's got a number on it as well. So let's say it's uh, 16x squared. Uh, plus 4x and uh, plus a number, I don't know, plus 20, and then that's divided by, and I don't know what, maybe it's bracket x minus 3, something like this. Now, this is unlikely to simplify because I've just made it up, but if you've got a quadratic, so an x squared, an x, and a number, you still do the same thing, still factorize, it's just that this top chap, hopefully, We'll factorize into a bracket. Now I'm going to make it up because uh, I just made up these numbers. So let's assume that this factorized into x plus 4 and x minus 3. Now obviously it doesn't because 4 times 3 would be 12. So I'm, I'm just changing the question here completely. But let's say a different question did factorize into these two brackets uh, and then you've still got the x minus 3 on the bottom. Uh, because this is now just a bracket times a bracket, and you've got this full expression here, which you could put in a bracket if you wanted to. You could then just cancel the whole bracket and cancel the whole bracket. Often at GCSE, they'll they'll give you the question already in brackets, and you can just delete the brackets. Yes, just cancel them like you would uh, the four and the two there, or the a and the a in that one. Um, you can just cancel them. And what people do wrong is they they start expanding the bracket and doing their double bracket expansion which is crazy because the whole point about simplifying algebraic fractions is factorize it. So if they've already done the factorizing for you, they're basically just wanting to make it only have a couple of marks rather than you know three or four marks. 
And so they've done the first step for you. They just want to see the cancelling down. So if you see this kind of question, and it is a really hard question like that, don't expand the brackets. If it's already been factorised for you, just cancel where you can. Obviously, if you've got something uh, like this, and they're really mean, they might say, you know, plus seven on the end. Well, then you will have to expand the brackets, get a quadratic, simplify with the plus seven, refactorize it, and assuming it will refactorize, and then if one of the fraction, uh, one of the brackets still cancels with the bottom, then you can cross it out. But we're getting pretty nasty questions at that stage, so I think this is probably time that I uh, I leave you to it. Um, if you have any questions, if I haven't made anything clear, let me know. Otherwise, try for now.